Good afternoon. Welcome back to eSums Engineering. This is uh, Jeff Copperthight here with a lesson on Activity 311, uh, or at least the first part of the Activity 3.1.1 from the CSP curriculum. Uh, I do have a second video of uh, on this activity that walks through the Excel portion, so this would be the part that would go before uh, this. So obviously, you can see I'm recording this after the fact, but. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to look at this uh, part of the assignment, specifically the canopy section. So you know that at this point, if you're looking at this activity, you are given uh, information from the source files, which by the way, if you are uh, looking for those, they are at the top of the page, 311 source files. And when you download those source files, you ba basically have access to birth date data for first names in the United States uh, from 1880 to 2012. And if you also download the uh, um, the optional files, you also get a state breakdown as well. So you also in here would get one uh, Python file called visualize, visualize Names, and when you're done, you'll end up with a second file because you'll be making some changes to that file. So uh, unlike previous Python work, you will, instead of being creating things, you're gonna be just modifying some code. So we're going to first take a look at the, uh, the program itself. So your, con your, your goal here is to try to figure out how long it would take you to plot your birth name, your first name uh, rate. So how many people were born with your name in all of the years of the file that are present here. So if you went from 1880 to 2012 and plotted your name, how many people would be born in those years with your name? And having to plot that obviously would be by hand quite time consuming. You'd have to go through each file, find your name and then record that number and then go to the next file and do exactly the same thing and rinse and repeat for 130 plus times, right? So it's gonna take you some time to do something like that. So what if there was a program that actually does this for you? Well, it turns out of course that within the Canopy folder, um, within the Canopy program, sorry, uh, the Python file that you find, there actually is. So if you open this program, it's called visualizenames.py and it's a 40 line program and basically, all you have to do is load it up and you run it. Now just be careful though, because if you run this file and you have not yet extracted the file, so oftentimes I'll, I'll see students, they'll download the source files. Oh, there's the file. Um, they'll download the source files and then they will just be looking in the compressed folder. And yeah, you can read the text message, uh, text files that are in the folder, but this file needs uh, access to them. This program needs access to them. And if you are trying to load it up in uh, from the compressed file, it's going to be looking in whatever temporary directory your compressed files would go into before you actually extract them. So make sure that when you open up the, the uh, source files, there is an extract all files button up here, or if you have WinZip, you just have to unzip them, uh, and just make sure that they are indeed unzipped before you start looking at the files and before you actually um, open up this file. So when you open this file, when it works perfectly, you end up with a graph and you'll plot. So matplotlib will plot this. And the default names that are in here are Juan and Juanita. So in blue, that's how many Juans were born from 1880 to 2012. And here in pink is the Juanitas born from 1880 to 2012. So uh, this file basically is quite, quite useful because if you look at it, you say, well, name one and name two are Juan and Juanita. So why not just go ahead and change those names to something else? And that will allow you to graph those names. So for example, if I use my first name, I can just modify this and say Jeffrey, right? And then I can put name two, I can put uh, another person up here, let's say Karen, right? So if I put those two up here and then run the file, I now get a graph that looks like this. But you'll notice right away, maybe not right away, but you'll notice that the heading is still one and Juanita, right? So that means that somewhere else in the program, Juan and Juanita are being referenced. And if you look carefully at line 39 on my screen uh, and or line 39 on your screen, you'll see that there is a set title command for the AX object on, uh, in a, t a set title method, I should say, on the AX object, which is US babies named Juan Blue and Juanita Pink. Well, we don't necessarily want, so what happens here, let me explain this first. Uh, we have put a name in here directly into the program as opposed to using something more convenient like a variable. What we've done here is called hard-coded data. We have put hard-coded data in here. So in other words, if I wanna change this to Jeffrey and Karen, I would have to go into this line as well and type here, Jeffrey and Karen, right? And then if I change that title and run the file again, then of course the setting would update, right? But that would be kind of a 
but that would be kind of a pain to have to do every single time. So here's the, the corrected file, right? You know, blue and Karen uh, in pink there. So, but like I said, that would be kind of a pain to need to do every single time that you want to make a name change, right? So one of the things that you should do, and this, by the way, if we go to the activity, these, uh, what I'm showing you here kind of aligns to numbers five and, uh, and, and number six we're kind of discussing. We're going to discuss the code in just a second to kind of go through what's going on here. But we're really looking at um, we're literally looking at number 11 in this case, right? We're modifying the code to visualize pattern data for your name and variation of your name as described in step two, and then do a partner's name, and then you do screenshots of that. But you'll notice, again, that information is hard-coded, right? So actually, we're looking at number 13, okay? Line 40 of the code has hard-coded data. The disadvantages, of course, are that you would have to change this every single time you want to use a different name. So there is a way to do that. So I'm going to show you in this in this section here both what the file does and things that are hard coded and ways to generalize it. Okay. In other words, make it easy to make changes so you can put different names in there and not have to go through the program line by line. So let's just go look at this program and see what's going on in each one, right? So there's already some comments on this line right here. Get the directory name for the data files. So this is importing OS path, and then the directory is the current area of the path. So that's what's going on here, right? So that's just basically opening up files and opening up the path or setting the path to where this program is. That's why it's important that you extract the files. So that way it's looking for the... Uh, the data files in the same directory as the uh, as the Python file. So you do that, and then we're going to have some aggregator uh, lists. We're counting years and number of people because that's kind of what we're plotting. We're making a line graph, and each plot, each point is what year is it? T and how many people were born with that name, which is by the way called frequency, right? So we are making a line graph with frequency as the y-axis, okay? So we'll kind of make note of that. And we're doing this, of course, also for another set. We're making two sets and putting both of them on the same plot, which is fine. Now here, we're gonna look at, comments here says, scan one year's file at a time. So let's take a look at how this works. From the range 1880 to 2013, so we're gonna, oh, stepping up by one. So every year from 1880 all the way to 2013, the file name is we're going to use the previous directory, but then we're going to throw in YOB plus the strength of the year that we're in, that in, in the loop, and then plus .txt. And you'll notice that the uh, format of the files in here are all the same, YOB 1880, 1881, 1882, and so forth. So it's basically to open up the file that it's currently at. So if it starts at 1880, it's going to open up the 1880.txt file. And then it's going to open the file name, and it's going to read the file name. That's what that R is for. Then it's going to go through all of the names in the data. For the line in the data file, so data file is equal to the file name for each line. We're looping through each line. We're going to split up the each line into three categories by the line split comma. So every time there's a comma, the name is the first value, then a comma, then the gender, and the second value is, the, and is gender, and the third value is number. And then it's going to be basically looking for, what this is basically doing is looking for the names that you've put into the top of the code. So you put name equals name one and gender equals M. Now here's the thing, right? What if I want to put a different name in? If I want to put a female name, what if I want to look for female Jeffries? And actually there are female Jeffries, just saying. Um, if I want to look for those, here's another instance where I've hard coded or some hard data is hard coded, right? So what if I instead say gender one you know, or maybe name one equals gender one, right? So I can go up here and I can say, let's make this gender one equals M, right? And then I can have the file check for gender one instead of checking for the hard coded value of M. And then I can kind of do the same thing for here, gender two, right? So I can assign a value here. This would make it a lot easier to update the code and make it so that you can just instead of having to hard code and go back in individual lines of code and changing things, we have now make this, made this much more generalized, okay? Generalized by using constant values once and variables in the code, right? And I know we're getting there. We're getting to the next item, obviously, on here as we go down the list, but just so you know what's going on here. If the names are equal and the genders are equal, then we add that value to the list. We add the year and we add the number. Right, and then the same thing happens with name two, and, and now now we can start gender two, gender two, and then once we're done with all of the file names, and we just close the file. I'm sorry, we're done with that file. We close the file, and then we continue this loop again and go to the next file and keep going, going, going until we get that right. By hand, this would take a long time. Computers can do it in a couple of seconds. You saw what happened when I clicked play. That that graph opened a couple of seconds later. 
And then once it's gathered all the data, then we're going to open up matplotlib. We're going to open up a subplot. We're going to plot the years one and number of people and years two, number of people two. And then we're going to set the title. Now, again, here's the title, right? Right now, Jeffrey and Karen are hard coded. Hard coded. So we're going to have to use a concatenation feature on here. So I'm going to leave a space. I'm going to put a parenthesis plus name one, because that's the name, I, the variable name I gave. And, and then the and is a string. And I forgot, I, I, I have to add in the blue as well. Name two, right? Plus, and then a parenthesis. Okay? I have to add in the blue here as well to indicate the legend. Now let's try this, right? So this was hard coded data. So now let's put that here. This was hard coded data. Now we have, and then of course, Fig Show would, be, would display it on the screen. So let's run this file now and let's check this out, see if it works. So we'll open up a plot. It opened up figure four. So here you go. Jeffrey, blue, Karen, pink. Um, doesn't seem, I maybe want to space after Jeffrey. So let's just make that change real fast. But let's test out and see if we can look up other names. So let's say we want to look up, a, let's use a popular name like Jonathan, right? Uh, it could be a different couple of the spellings. Maybe we have a uh, no age, right? Jonathan, right? And then, of course, now since these are both males, we'll look up for males in both cases, right? So then we plot it. And I know they're using pink in this case. Whoops. Uh, where's that new? There's the new plot, right? So here we go, Jonathan here, and Jonathan in pink. So obviously, the standard spelling of Jonathan is much more popular than using the H, right? So, and I, I did put a, yeah, I did put capital in as well. So that works out nicely, right? So you could see here that making things more generalized is going to make it much easier to just make changes to the file instead of having to go line by line. And that's what you're going to be doing in number 13. Now, the other thing you're going to want to be looking at, you're also going to want to look at what you're doing with uh, the time that you're saving. So once you have, have a generalized solution, something that you can use frequently, something you use over and over and, and basically rinse and repeat, as I like to say, then it's, it's much easier to answer the questions you're trying to answer, right? So in this section, you're, you're basically going to be making the changes to that code, and then you're going to be making sure that you're including plots, both of your name and a variation. And if you're working for a, with a partner, you would also use your partner's information just as well. So that hopefully will help you out with this Python portion of here. And uh, remember, don't forget, we have an Excel portion of the video as well that I want you to check out that will help you go through the relative frequencies and how to use Excel with these files. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it helped you. Please subscribe to ESIMS Engineering and like this video if it helped you. I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to be awesome.